I'm going to have to go before half, but we need to chat for a couple of minutes here about Tipperary because we it, it's gas. If Tipperary had won the game, we wouldn't be one uh, one hour and forty nine minutes into the show without mentioning them greatly. Like I was down at the game, like it was so obvious five minutes into the game that Tip were in bother. And I don't think it was a mentality thing at all. I just think what Niall mentioned there, what I'm getting more at physically is, yes, teams can throw down to Limerick on a given day, but can they come back the next day and again and again and again? Limerick are able to do that every day. And that's the difference between them and everybody else at the moment. Clare can throw it down to them on a given day, but can they do it in the All-Ireland quarterfinal last year after? Maybe just about they couldn't do it in the semi-final and Tipperary not been able to you know they, you can't make conditioning deficits in three or four months well this is something now right this was the first time that Tipperary didn't have a two-week gap in between their matches in the Munster Championship and it's made a decisive difference so like you've made the point about Limerick and it's a well-made point that they have kind of I don't know, I suppose, the, the what, what do they call it, the muscle memory or whatever you want to say, that they have that physical conditioning, that they can play these game after game after game. So I think Tipperary definitely suffered for that. But you can't ignore the amount of injuries that Tipperary have. They're digging so deep into the panel that play, uh, people outside of Tipperary have never heard of some of the players that came on yesterday or that, that have featured, you know, occasionally in the last game or two. You know, people in Tipperary know all these lads and know that they've got quality. But, like, number one... Tipperary were quite unlucky. Mark Keogh was pulled back in the lead-up to that goal that was disallowed. You know, Seamus Kennedy flicked it to the net. Could have been a penalty. I can see you're smirking already. He's pulled back and, for a fair whack of steps. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he definitely did, but he was fouled even before that, so it could have been a free. And then at the other end, Reese Shelley made a mistake. And obviously, you can't make a mistake like that. But also, to me, Desi Hutchinson flicked across the head of Brian O'Mara. So that should have been a disallowed goal. So that's a huge swing in a game where Tipperary are labouring but slowly reeling Watford in, and they could have come back if that if that goal hadn't been allowed, and it shouldn't have been allowed, in my opinion. Should that goal have been allowed for Desi Hutchinson? I actually, because I only watched it in real time. Um, I didn't watch anything anything back on the TV, and I didn't notice it in real time. But that should have been dealt with twice. I would yeah. say that it should have yeah. been dealt with twice. But I was going down through the tip team, and I was thinking, okay, who are Where's the, the pace? tip? Yeah, no, I'm not even necessarily that. I was going down through the tip team, and I was thinking, okay. Who are the worker bees here? And I'm looking at Seamus Kendi, Dan McCormick, Alan Tynan, Connor Stakelam, and they were all unable to get on the ball yesterday and have a really big impact on the game. They just looked legless. Even, like, with due respect to Bonner Matter, I couldn't believe he was still on the pitch after an hour. He just looked physically spent. That was all. Not that it's just he played 50, 55 minutes before against the best team in the land, and I just thought he looked spent. But as you say there, you were going really deep into your reserves, deeper than Lean Cattle probably thought he would ever have to go. And you really need this break now, and you're look you're lucky to have survived. The break will, from the way Cattle was talking, he's hopeful of having nearly everybody available. I think Jake Morris was in a sling, something with an AC joint, which is a, a ropey enough injury. But we did say Lee Ch- see Lee Chin playing with that injury. I think one thing that one positive probably that came out of it was. And like the ball going in wasn't hectic, but Callan still looked plenty sharp enough, and Connor Ball looked sharp enough off the bench. But they were fighting, losing battles all over the pitch. Well, how often did um, Watford walk up the pitch? You know, so they basically retreat or went outside their own forty-five for the puckouts, which, if you lose it, is highly risky. And I think it's cost them massively in other games. Didn't in this because Tipperary were so leggy. Like, Watford were very, very good, but let's be realistic about where Tipperary were in this game. But Watford were able to walk the ball out. So Tipperary had 15 men outside the 45. Nobody could get near the man who was then carrying the ball out. He wasn't even forced to do a 1-2 or mm-hmm. anything. And then would deliver a ball all the way to the inside forward line for the likes of the brilliant Patrick Fitzgerald, Desi Hutchinson, somebody like this. So Tipperary were getting no pressure anywhere. Where the ball was coming from, where it was being delivered, in the middle, Tipperary were all at sea. And then when Tipperary were trying to work the ball out, it was just, OK, let's get the ball. OK, let's drive it up and hit. The... So you might have an extra man back in the Watford defence. So they're sort of half zone, half marking, half a little bit zone. So marking outside the man and then leave someone in the middle. And it was just hitting the guy who was on the outside waiting for yeah. the ball. Like, Tip were absolutely dreadful. But they looked yeah. like a team dead in their feet. And I'm not just making excuses and shaping the narrative that this is actually working out lovely for Tip. But it kind of is as well. But Tip have only one win in the last 10 championship games. That can't be ignored either. 
Yeah, and Waterford second round robin win in sixteen, and the two of them are against Tipperary, which is ironic. Cattle been the manager for one, and Cattle been the losing manager for the other. Um, it was just a there was a lack of energy. Tip weren't able to break the tackle at all. They didn't seem to. They just seemed to be. They looked kind of punch struck almost from the off. They started. You know when you're very stiff and sore, lethargic going into a game, you can get into your gear in the second half. Noel McGrath ended up up on the freeze. Garota Connor went off with an ankle injury. I think he rolled his ankle. They gave a fair casualty list at the moment. We're looking at Garota Connor, Cottle Barrett, uh, Jake Morris. I think Niall O'Mara was back on, on the squad yesterday. Um, I'd say there was probably a couple others that are fairly battered and bruised today as well. Um, Liam Cattle kind of basically had no problem saying that it was a hammering. He also took uh, fair umbrage to some comments that Davy had made about emotional baggage that Waterford had had um, carrying over from last year and didn't think it was a fair comment. And to be honest, it's an absolutely ridiculous comment because like, where was all if, if the emotional baggage of one loss to Clare last year? Where's all the emotional what's the opposite of baggage what's the positive of baggage of the two and a half years before that you know all that positive muscle memory of getting to an All-Ireland final beating Kilkenny beating Tip in Championship beating Clare in Championship getting to a semi-final the year after winning a league so I just I just can't buy that at all Um, but there you know there's no point getting away from it you're lucky probably to be in the position that you are and like I, I was amazed as well you were going for goals deep in, into injury time yesterday from positions that were not goal scoring positions when, when he, a point he or two be, would have done. Yeah. Oh, like fine, fine margins. You're beaten by was it if you were beaten by five or more, or was it five or less? He needed to get down to four. And I, I couldn't believe what he was looking like lads forcing goal chances. Um you're blessed that you that you live to fight another day. Oh look I was sweating. I had the two screens on at the one time. I was up at Crow Park and I had Limerick Cork up on the TV and I had GA go flying on the laptop as well and Hey, let, a word on Patrick Fitzpat or Patrick uh, Fitzgerald. I mean, this guy should have been starting all year. He is magic. Some of his touches are unbelievable. He's just got star quality written all over him. Yeah, he's a brilliant player. He's a brilliant player. And he just, isn't he a big lad for his age? Mm. Like he takes some punishment. Yeah, he is physically a big lad. Like, and, you know, Desi's probably a good bit slighter and that. It was great to see the two of them in there because they've been in there at club level with Bally Gunner and been so dangerous. And they were, fair, like, while Billy Nolan was playing sweeper and, like, like I have to say, like, I, that was a mad call in my head and it worked <laughs> splendidly. They would it work like, Would it work in other games or a fresher tip? Or, look, and, uh, look, Watford were brilliant, but would it work in, in other games? No, that's a fair point, totally, because it's, you know... Uh, in other games, I think the pace would have been an awful lot higher than yesterday. Yesterday was pedestrian enough from a tip point of view. Waterford played 100 miles mile an hour. I couldn't believe that uh, tip allowed uh, Waterford to puck out at times as well. Like I remember looking at Caleb Lyon standing on 65 and you could see Liam Cattle shouting in. He was standing by himself. It was amazing to see that, that tip had left some of Waterford's main ball carriers free from puck outs. Um, it was a sign of maybe what Waterford can do going forward. And it was probably a bit of a reality check for Tip, but they have time to get the, you know, to kind of circle the wagons and get a lot of boys back onto the field again. Yeah. Owen oh, Hurley says, ah, lads, a week is plenty of time to recover. It's a game of hurling, not the Battle of the Gettysburg. We can't talk <laughs> up how athletic our players are on one hand and then say one game a game week is too much for them. Uh, you want to tip away there? I'll just run through the last of the results anyway. Some week um, of hurling, Shane, uh, in closing, wasn't it? Absolutely unbelievable. And hopefully the rest of the championship will be uh, another big treat for us as well. Yeah, the, the shame is that so much of it is just horse together and we can't just just cut the league in half and let us enjoy the championship a little bit more by spreading it out a small bit. Games exactly. every two weeks would do us nicely. Right, Michael, we'll chat to you later on. I'll go through the last of uh, what's flying here. By the way, Seamus Callan scored three points in that game and we were talking about TJ Reid and Patrick Horgan earlier about being two of the modern greats. I mean, Callan has scored 39 championship goals and absolutely every one of them has come from play during that time. So I think I feel like sometimes that is forgotten. 